The rise and fall of Saudi Arabia's linear city, the line. What if I told you that Saudi Arabia set out to build a futuristic city, 170 kilometers long, only 200 meters wide, and 500 meters tall, with zero cars, zero roads, and zero emissions? A city where everything you need is within a five-minute walk, powered entirely by clean energy, and run by AI. Sounds like the plot of a sci-fi movie, right? But it's real, or at least, it was supposed to be. This is The Line, Saudi Arabia's ultra-ambitious linear city project. And what started as one of the boldest urban planning experiments in human history is now facing a harsh dose of reality. In this video, we're diving deep into the rise and fall of The Line, what it promised, how far it got, why it's faltering, and what it all means for the future of city living. The Dream, a revolution in urban life. At its core, the line was designed to challenge everything we know about how cities work. Instead of expanding outward like traditional cities, the line was meant to stretch upward and forward, an ultra-dense, hyper-efficient urban ribbon across the desert. The concept was launched in 2021 as part of Saudi Arabia's larger NEOM project, a futuristic megacity initiative aimed at transforming the country's economy and image. The line was envisioned as a utopia where 9 million people would live, work, and play in a vertical smart city powered entirely by renewable energy. No cars, no pollution, no long commutes. It promised a complete rethinking of how we interact with cities. Residents would use ultra-high-speed transit to move through the linear structure in minutes. Drones and AI would manage logistics, deliveries, and security. Green spaces, urban farms, and solar panels would be embedded directly into the architecture. And with no cars or roads, more space would be dedicated to nature and community. It was the architectural equivalent of declaring independence from everything wrong with modern urban sprawl. Bold? Absolutely. Unrealistic? Well, that's where the cracks began to show. The momentum. Billions poured in. In the early days, the line gained global attention for all the right reasons. Investors were curious. Environmentalists were cautiously hopeful. Architects and futurists were obsessed. Billions of dollars were poured into NEOM, and the line quickly became the project's crown jewel. Construction officially began, promotional videos went viral, and Saudi Arabia declared it a symbol of its Vision 2030 a massive campaign to diversify the kingdom's oil-dependent economy and position it as a global leader in innovation. The visuals were jaw-dropping, mirrored walls stretching across the desert horizon, floating cities, vertical gardens, and high-tech living pods stacked like Jenga blocks. International firms were hired, excavation began, and satellite imagery even showed early progress on the groundwork. For a while, it really looked like this radical reimagining of urban life might actually come to life. People started calling it the city of the future, and with enough money, ambition, and sand, it seemed anything was possible. The reality check, scale versus feasibility. But building a sci-fi megacity in the real world is, well, a little more complicated. As the initial hype faded, reality began to hit hard. First came logistical nightmares. Building a continuous 170 kilometer long structure in the middle of the desert? That's an engineering challenge unlike anything humanity has ever attempted. Just think about the sheer scale. You're talking about a structure taller than the Empire State Building, stretching further than the distance from Los Angeles to San Diego. And this isn't just a facade. It was supposed to function as a fully livable city with complex infrastructure systems embedded throughout its length and height. Then came concerns about costs. Experts began to question whether the projected $500 billion budget would be nearly enough. Spoiler alert, it probably isn't. The deeper the planning went, the more expensive and complex the project became. Estimates suggest that completing even a fraction of the line could take decades and balloon the budget into trillions. Add to that the difficulties of sourcing labor, materials, and technology in such a remote area and things start to look less like a smart city and more like a very expensive mirage. Human rights and social backlash. Beyond technical issues, the line began facing intense criticism on ethical grounds. 
several reports surfaced about forced evictions of local tribes in the Tabuk region to make way for construction. In particular, the displacement of the Huaitat tribe raised red flags for human rights organizations around the world. There were also stories of arrests and even deaths linked to the resistance against the development. Suddenly, the line wasn't just a question of engineering, it was a question of morality. This backlash threatened to undermine Saudi Arabia's broader Vision 2030 goals, which hinge on modernizing the country's global image. For a project that was supposed to represent the future, clean, inclusive, and progressive, this was a PR disaster. The irony didn't go unnoticed. A utopian city built on a foundation of displacement and controversy? Not exactly the symbol of progress it was pitched to be. And in an age of increasing global scrutiny, especially with so much media attention on Saudi development, the kingdom found itself walking a very fine line, pun fully intended. The slowdown. From 170 kilometers to... two? Now, here's where the story takes a turn. Recent reports indicate that the line is being massively scaled back. Instead of the full 170 kilometers originally planned, current construction seems to be focusing on just a two kilometer segment. That's not even 1% of the total vision, and even that small portion might not be fully functional for years. Some insiders have even speculated that the project could be mothballed entirely or reimagined in a much smaller form. Why the slowdown? In short, money, time, and realism. With global inflation, rising material costs, and limited progress on the ground, even Saudi Arabia, with all its oil wealth, may be recognizing that the line's full vision is financially and logistically unsustainable. Plus, public enthusiasm is waning. What once captivated the world is now increasingly seen as an overambitious concept that tried to leap 100 years into the future without fully solving the problems of the present. A beautiful idea? Absolutely. A practical one? Not so much. What the line teaches us. So what can we learn from the rise and fall of the line? One key lesson is this. Bold ideas are essential, but execution is everything. The line pushed the boundaries of what we thought was possible in urban planning. It made the world reimagine cities not as chaotic, congested sprawls, but as efficient, sustainable systems designed for people, not cars. That's a win in itself. But visionary projects have to be grounded in reality, both technically and socially. They need buy-in from the people they impact, not just the politicians and investors funding them. The line also shows the danger of putting form over function. While the mirrored walls and sleek visuals made headlines, critics argued that the actual usability of such a city, especially with that linear shape, would be awkward and impractical in real life. Imagine needing to travel 70 kilometers to visit a friend or attend an event. Even with high-speed trains, that kind of layout creates a host of problems traditional cities have already solved. So what do you think? Was the line doomed from the start? Or was it a necessary experiment in pushing the limits of imagination? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who still thinks flying cars are the next big thing. The future of cities is being written right now, and sometimes, it takes a little failure to find the path forward.